Meta, most effective tactics available. Many of us have heard that term in so many other games already. We cannot stop it from surfacing as it will always exist in some kind, shape and form. So what is the meta in World of Warships? And how important is it? As I made many videos with goal of helping people understand this game and enjoy it more, I feel it is a high time for me to address it. Following the meta is not essential for majority of us. Most of World of Warships players play this game almost only casually in randoms. Selecting a ship in World of Warships is like picking a tool in a workshop. You need to pick one that's suitable for you. World of Warships player base consists of so many different kinds of people, and everyone has their different preferences and playstyles. We have those that are full of energy, we just gotta go fast. We have those that prefer more calm, strategic playstyle. And we have those that like the Gorilla Warfare. We have the Marxists, the anarchists, the agitators, the looters, and people who, in many instances, have absolutely no clue what they are doing. Good craftsmen with tools fitted perfectly for them can often do much more than someone with quote unquote correct tool. However, knowing the meta, can help a ton. So here is a video in which I will address all of it. Meta ships for all the classes, meta captain builds, while also speaking about the strategies that are mostly commonly used. We will do overview of what we have now, what is the direction I think the wargaming is going, how I feel about it, then we will go for more details based on the classes, after which we will talk about the nations and their identities and which ones are currently good. Brace yourself guys, there is gonna be a lot of talk coming up. So let's do a quick overview of current meta. So what we have right now is far from perfect. We can see the domination of HE spam from rapid firing guns, hybrid ships with planes and funny buttons. The conditional consumable like perk you can use as many times as you want in battle as long as you get the charges done. And of course the homing tops from submarines. All of this is pushing many older design ships into pit of the forgotten. However, some ships that are here from game's beginning are still proving to be relevant, such as Des Moines and Yamato. In random battles, we can see that tanky close quarter ships, especially the pushing ones, are heavily punished for just existing, as amount of dangers awaiting them increased significantly. However, recent addition of Pan-American battleships might be a sign of slight change in what Wargaming is doing. Pan-American ships also are great example of funny button done well. Usage of AP shells is also being slowly pushed aside by Wargaming in favor of HE and SAP shells mostly in order to simplify the most basic process that for some reason is so much of a problem for many people, the aiming. In general, meta in World of Warships random games is currently focused on gimmicks and consistent DPM with borderline no skill requirement, low risk, low reward, rather than ships requiring time and practice while also taking higher risks or bigger rewards. In uh, rank games that are usually much smaller form than the usual 12v12 on randoms, we can see some space for actually brawling ships. There is much less dangerous to pushing and the games are generally decided much faster so planes do not have enough time to become that big of a threat in this mode. So the meta resembles more of what we had long time ago, where secondary battleships fought face to face and the biggest threat to the push was a torpedo boat on the flank. When it comes to clan battles, meta there does not shift drastically through seasons. Most common ships there are fast gunboat DDs that are usually French, heavy cruisers with long riders such as Russians, and durable battleships with either overmatch or, con or good concealment. Alternatively, secondary pushing battleships. So we have there a lot of German, Russian and US ships. Big focus in clan battles is on consumables and their proper usage as well as correct positioning rather than sheer DPM. Now it's time for classes and their meta roles. Let's start with destroyers. This class was mainly used for providing spotting, taking objectives and being a threat to enemy team with their tops. Or being focused on hunting down other DDs using their concealment guns and armor while restraining themselves to just poking the other ships. 
they also used to have very small range of consumables available, which was mostly smoke, engine boost and sometimes heal. If IDD had Hydro like Z52, it was considered broken. Now we have DDs with on average very powerful both main battery and tops, radars and I think all the possible consumables. Meta DDs are usually full on gunboats or hybrid ships. Smokeboat farming DDs like Sherman or big destroyers like Kleber with a range of a cruiser are performing incredibly well these days. Daring is also proving its worth as a DD hunting machine that is also incredibly consistent. On a side note, I wanna say that this DD is the one I find the most well balanced and I think no matter the changes Wargaming will implement, this one will remain relevant. Ships like Smallant and Day Radar are also incredibly powerful. No wonder this ship was really quickly removed from the shop from torpedo boats. Surprisingly, Shimakaze is still good, even though this type of DDs are not really favored these days. And there are so many other torpedo boats with guns able to, to easily kill Shimakaze. And its AA is borderline not existent. Shimakaze, however, represents the peak of design back from the old days and ship was just good at what it does. Now let's talk about cruisers. Here things get a little bit wild. It is HE, HE, sometimes SAP, more HE, funny buttons, buttload of consumables, and you guessed it, HE. Only time cruiser uses AP as main ammo it is when it's the improved one to almost the same parameters as SAP. Big heavy cruisers and standard cruisers are really just spamming each from long ranges, which in my opinion is a very sad sign. Light cruisers usually just do the very same thing, but with alternatively having a smoke screen or ability to shoot over an island. The ones that were supposed to be played around torpedoes we're expecting to guns. Too many players force themselves to play against the design of the ship and full spec range and spam HE. This is just because of how HE is favored. In my opinion, this is very sad science. Wargaming, please do something about that. Radars can make any cruiser viable. Long range heavy AA is present on almost every new cruiser added. Add good HE and range and in general you have a meta one. Gimmicks such as funny buttons allowing for multiple salvos at once on super ships are also making it hard for other cruisers to approach the battlefield. So another reason for the game to be played on longer ranges. Meta cruisers are Henry with her speed, Venezia with her smoke and SAP, Nevsky, even though forgotten a bit, is also a very viable option thanks to his tankiness and strong AA. And of course 12km radar. Hindenburg with her high pen. Worcester being an incredibly strong cruiser for securing a large portion of the map while protecting teammates with its powerful AA. San Martin with super heal, almost stealth radar and very strong AA even though AP only it is great support for allied DDs and funny button allows it to reload consumables much quicker than other cruisers. Good and Lou with its gimmicky planes was experimented a lot in competitive and found a good spot in meta as reliable battle cruiser and forever viable ships like Des Moines and Petro. Des Moines with amazing AP and firepower and these and everything else finds a good spot in here, however, she suffers a lot when facing overmatch. Petro, even though heavily nerfed due to outcries of community, is competitively very powerful choice. Not really so powerful in randoms. In smaller formats, it can utilize long range radar, flat arcs and main battery with upgraded AP and tankiness incredibly well. Now let's go over the battleships. The BBs are in a rough position right now. 
since so many ships play around HE and ignoring angling and armor, making many offensive plays proves to be quite a bit of a challenge. Many BBs right now prefer to be sitting in the backline and play around ability to go dark once focused too much, using the caliber to overmatch or HE again to fight. With latest addition of legendary mod to Cristofo Colombo, we can also experience a lot of players just slinging SAP from long range to the mice of a cruiser and battleships trying to play around angling their armor. Pushing BBs borderline do not find themselves in here. However, previously mentioned Pan American battleships that are in early access look like small wind of change, since these are actually very well equipped to push, while not being overtuned. On release I can absolutely see them in metal. In terms of battleships AA, regardless of how powerful it is, unless the ship has def AA, this aspect can be ignored. And that is because AA accuracy for this class is set to around 75%, which means that with enough RNG, CV can almost entirely ignore its existence, which also points into sitting far away from actual battlefield as possible, in order to waste as much time for CV before he can get to you. Meta battleships for randoms are Christopher Colombo with its sub, Vermont combining heavy AA and hard hitting AP with decent overmatch, Yamato and IGN Classic with 32mm overmatch, meaning it can even go through noses of battleships, and HE Slingers such as Burgoyne, Thunderer and Conqueror. For rankeds, things look a little bit different, as apart from the same things that happen in randoms, pushing secondary battleships have a little bit of a briefer here, hence ships like GK, Schlieffen or Secondary Ohio and even Shikishima can be a viable choice. Ok, now let's go over the aircraft carriers. CVs and planes in general are considered to be incredibly strong, but that is not really so true. Power level depends on which planes we take a look on. Spotting is a key part of CV gameplay, with weaker CVs using this as their main advantage over the opposing team. And since many people get paralyzed when they see planes incoming like deer in the headlights of a car causes incredible emotional damage psychological pressure there are two types of squadrons that make a specific cv metal torpedo planes and ap bomb squads ap rockets and ap dive bombers are one of the few worst squads in the game since they have been heavily nerfed throughout the years due to what I assume was cries of people that have problems with dodging, angling, etc. Kinda the same stuff that caused AP shells to be not favored in other classes as well. Well, apart from Molta's carpet bombing, this I think was somewhat justifiable. In terms of H rockets, but they are okay. We also recently got a new line of more support CVs. The Essex with ability to drop smoke screens for allies and with upgraded fighters with reduced ability of spotting. Which makes that ship less of a damage farmer and more of a support for the team. And I do like this direction of making CVs more of a help and care rather than selfish while I kill everyone and you look. Meta CVs right now are Nakimov. This ship is completely overtuned with damage output due to I drop everything at once gimmick. So standard Soviet bias. Hakuryu, great and easy to use squads with strong torpedo ones and lots of planes in the hangar. Requires quite a bit of skill to master this CV, however it pays greatly. Midway, all around their squads with great HE dive bombers with a gimmick allowing them not to lose accuracy during the dive. Many people do not know about that. Essex is a great ship to play in division, easy to play with special squadrons that regen quickly, even though they are re relatively weaker than regular CV ones. 
In here I also want to address the hybrid ships. We have hybrid DDs, cruisers and battleships. People keep saying that those are broken, yet I never saw one being even remotely annoying in the opposing team. In fact, they are more annoying in my own team, since they assume that having planes justify playing like a CV. So they do just that. Which makes the team be down one player for majority of the battle. Their planes on average are underpowered compared to regular CVs. I'm not saying that they are not too strong, I'm saying that they are weaker than the regular CV planes. In terms of meta, I don't really think they fit in it, apart from divisions and competitive games, like clan battles. But they are usually banned there anyway. In terms of submarines, well, they are just annoying. After changes to torpedoes no longer being able to shotgun people from point blank, all of them went into firing the homing jobs, almost exclusively, with most noticeable sub in the meta being the U4501. That one is the most annoying thing in this game to deal with, and I hope Wargaming will nerf it to oblivion soon, because, well, this is cancer. Now let's talk about the nation-specific meta. Each nation in this game has its own personality, which is also very well reflected in their special commander. Let's go have a look at what different nations have. US, all-around ships with good AA and powerful consumables. Improved radars, def AAs and famous long-lasting American smokescreens. IGN, ships that are good at what they do with powerful torpedoes, high survivability and decent firepower, with lack of AA and radars. Soviets, very durable ships, good on short to medium distances with long range radars and flat shell arcs, with considerable AA weak on long ranges. Royal Navy, powerful HE armament with improved heals, incredibly versatile destroyers, however all the ships have very po poorly designed armor scheme. Germany, strong secondary armament, improved HE pen but with low damage, improved long range hydro and very, uh, and very good armor scheme. Italians, SAP shields and crawling smoke screens, lack of HE armament and consumables such as hydro and radars and short range AA. France, fast ships with black hole armor pattern, fast reloading guns with main battery reload booster present very often, improved engine boost and good HE. Panasia, deep water torpedoes. Most of the ships are copies borrowed from nations like USA, especially on high tier, USSR or Japan. Panu, low speed ships with short reload, fast torpedoes with thinner spread. Pan American. Ships with improved concealment and funny buttons that conditionally improve the key characteristics of the ship. In almost every nation we can find some exceptions to the general personality, but most of the ships are designed to fit into those characteristics. US and IGN Navy, due to their excellent design, always can find a decent place and in general find to be performing well regardless of changes Wargaming does to the game and meta. Other nations, however, have slight problems doing that, since small changes make them either become monsters or completely irrelevant. Now let's talk a little bit about the strategies. Let's start with positioning. World of Warships was, is and always will be a game of trades. Right now, effective trading with enemies this is done almost exclusively from behind cover of island or smokescreen, done by using planes or slinging from longer distances, while making a push just makes you an easy target for so many enemy enemies that it forces you to make it extremely well executed and timed, when making a single mistake means certain death. In terms of team's coordination, in randoms the game is rather simple. There is always one flank that has more people than the other and this one should be the proactive one when the other has to be the reactive. 
Sadly, many people do not want to help others and coordinating even simple action as raiding someone out is very often not effective whatsoever. Others get ho false hopes of allies actually covering them with things like smoke, but that almost never happens. The only team coordination in randoms you can count on is the one from your division members. However, I highly suggest you try to communicate simple messages to your allies, saying, do you want smoke somewhere or I will use the radar to spot DDD in number of seconds. Or even simple thanks using quick command can really change how your teammates portray you and increase their willingness to fight alongside you. Do not blame others in random games for not following you, especially if you do not communicate that to them. It is better to just move on. In terms of clan battles, it is as if you are in one big division and coordinating movements can be crucial for victory. My tip to clan battle leaders is to do a little bit of research on who you have in the team. People that play a lot of divisions together casually will work much better together in clan battles, so put them on the same flanks. Obviously, you have to keep in mind that the strategy you are using based on ships as well. In terms of focus fire, Key factor in clan games and ranked, and on smaller scale important in randoms. While in clan games, focus depends on map, season and ships in the enemy team, while in randoms focus fire is more about killing the closest target. In all game modes, however, eliminating destroyers should be main focus for everyone. And what about balancing damage and supporting? Whilst in randoms many focus just on their personal score and helping others borderline does not exist, I still highly suggest you to watch what your allies are doing and reacting to it accordingly. You need to know when you are the one to carry, but also you need to know how to be the one being carried. In terms of clan battles, I used to merc in a few clans and noticed that too many players think that their score is the most important thing. No. No matter how much damage you farm in clan battles, if you lose, it was all for nothing. Clan battles are not a place for you to farm the score or to preserve your ship. Winning requires sacrifice. In terms of meta builds for ships, regardless of what ship you pick, you need a certain captain and build for it. There is a meta build for each ship there as well, but you don't need to follow it exactly. What does it mean? Once you pick a ship that fits your playstyle, aka a correct tool for you, you need to personalize it a bit to yourself. What I mean by that is from 21 points you can spend on the commander skills, around 14 to 16 usually should go towards the core of the build, which means towards the most important perks from the meta build, and the remaining points, in my opinion, should go towards personal preferences of the player. For upgrades, you generally should get the ones that follow the build you are using, aka do not go for the range mod on ships that you will fight up close, you just like shooting yourself in the foot for no reason. But for example, on some secondary ships, going for a secondary upgrade or a reload mode is purely personal preference. It depends on the ship and I do my best in my guides to point these out. How strong ship is can often change from patch to patch. Older ships sometimes become obsolete when new ships get released, but that is not always the case. Some new ships are misfires, like Elbing, Yodo and Jinan. They were made too weak in fears that overtuning them would lead to game-breaking moments, but well, we all know how it went. Knowing the flow of the changes in meta by keeping a keen eye of know the flow of the changes in meta by keeping a keen eye on the patch notes. Not every change shifts the meta too much though. Also, analyze your own gameplay and adapt to the current meta trends. 
know your enemy, know yourself, and keep improving. In the end, I want to say, no matter if you strictly follow the meta, or you just want to experiment with stuff, the most important factor is to find something that will suit you, but without forcing your preferences onto the ships that were created to do something else. Do not reshape the tool to the user, just pick another one. I hope I managed to bring you closer to the topic of how World of Warships looks today. If you want to see more content like this, like and subscribe. See you in the future. Signed out.